Hey, everybody. How's it going? Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, I am Jake from Spatial. I am our director of community. Um, doing a live stream today, going to walk you through how to create a gallery in Spatial. Uh, it's become you know, a really popular way to use Spatial by actually bringing your NFTs uh, from your wallets into a virtual space um, really easily, really quickly, so you can actually have a shared experience with 30 plus people um, with you at a time to actually have almost like you're in an actual gallery itself um, with people, other people that look like themselves, They, you can talk with them in a 3D space that's completely custom customizable by you uh, uh, with your art or with uh, other people's art um, that share it in the gallery with you. So I'm gonna walk through the process today of, of how to do that. Uh, we do have a chat going on over in our Discord. Uh, I'll put the link in here. Definitely join our Discord. Um, it's an amazing community uh, of, of spatial users, of artists, of creators of all kinds that are using spatial in all kinds of incredible ways. So definitely jump in our Discord. We've got a chat thread going in there. Feel free to, to add your questions. Um, or comments or thoughts or ideas. Uh, and I'll be kind of have that open on the side here and we'll be looking at that uh, as we go throughout this today. So I'm gonna kind of walk through all the steps and really it only takes a few minutes to get started and actually creating uh, creating your own gallery in Spatial. So let's just jump right into it and, uh, and get started. I'm gonna bring up my screen here. And let's do a Picture in picture, we can get that going. There we go. Make that full screen. There we go. And you lost my picture. Well, technical difficulties. There we go. Perfect. All right. So Let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're gonna to do to create our gallery, of course, is go right into Spatial. Um, so to get to Spatial, you'll just go to app.spatial.io. Uh, you'll log in, you can log in with, um, you don't have to create a dedicated Spatial account. You can log in with Google, with Apple, um, uh, with your email address, uh, with a Microsoft account. Um, so you can really kind of one-click sign in to Spatial. Now, once you jump in, uh, the first thing you're gonna see is a couple of tabs. Uh, you'll see the Explore tab. This is actually rooms that we're featuring from our community. So you can see all kinds of incredible galleries um, and other spaces for you to, of course, explore, get inspiration from, from other artists, from other creators. Um, and occasionally you'll see, you can see we've got things going on in the Family Secrets exhibit. Uh, Sabet, an incredible artist, uh, has his gallery in here as well. There's a number of people in there um, that are uh, that are exploring that space. This is a really great space to see all kinds of things that are going on. Uh, then you also have your Teams tab. So within, uh, if you're part of a team, you'll have this tab and you can see other spaces that members of your team or your group uh, are creating and can jump into those. And then your Spaces tab. Uh, this is all the different uh, spaces within Spatial that you've created or you've recently accessed um, or been invited to. So it's kind of a catch-all for all your uh, Spatial spaces. Um, but before we go get started actually creating our first space, uh, we're going to make sure um, for those NFT artists out there, uh, we're going to actually connect our MetaMask wallet to Spatial so that you can easily bring in uh, your incredible work and collections directly uh, into Spatial. So to do that, I'm gonna click on my name at the top. We're gonna to go down to integrations and you'll see we've got a whole host of incredible integrations uh, today just to bring in all kinds of files into Spatial. So Spatial natively works with all kinds of 2D files, 3D, 3D model files, uh, and of course, NFTs. So if you have files in Google Drive or Microsoft 365 OneDrive, you can add those integrations as well. Um, but today we're gonna to look at bringing in NFTs uh, and your Ethereum wallet. So if you see at the bottom, we have uh, a connection for your Ethereum wallet. Um, to do that, we work with MetaMask. So 
Um, make sure you have a MetaMask account set up. It's free to set up and have the integration uh, added into your web browser as well. I'm using Microsoft Edge here. Um, you can be using Chrome. Just make sure to add, install that uh, MetaMask uh, integration there. And then once you do that, you can simply click connect. Uh, in this case, it connected right away to mine since I had mine previously connected. Um, but you might see a pop-up from MetaMask um, up here just asking you to sign your wallet and confirm that integration. And that's really all you need to do to start bringing your NFTs into Spatial. So now I'm going to go back to the home screen here, and I'm going to create a new space. So I'm going to click New. And then here you see we have seven different environments that you can get started from. So we've created all these different spaces, um, absolutely gorgeous environments, everything from a mountain lounge with incredible views to uh, a really relaxing outdoor space that's around a bonfire and underneath uh, the Aurora. Um, but what we're gonna use today is the gallery. So this is the space that our team designed really with the explicit purpose of being used as, as a gallery, as a showcase space. So we're gonna, we're gonna use that as well. Um, since right now, I'm gonna keep this just to myself. Uh, I'm gonna make sure this says new personal space. I can click the dropdown and choose a team space. It's team space if I want this to be accessible to my team, um, other groups, um, small groups of people as well. But I'll show you how to open it up to really uh, anyone to invite to that space. So I'm gonna click new personal space and then I'm gonna choose the gallery. And just one thing to note, even though we have these uh, default environments, you can actually set your virtual environment, you'll see to anything that you want, any 3D model that exists out there. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit later, but to start, we're gonna start with this gallery environment. So I'm gonna click that and it's gonna spin up uh, a space for us here in just a second. And now that's all it takes to create uh, a spatial room. Now this now this space, um, of course, works right on uh, web browsers, but just through sharing a link, uh, anyone can access this space. Anyone that you've permission to access the space from the web browsers, of course, even mobile apps and virtual reality headsets. So it becomes super accessible to anyone to access these spaces, no matter what device they have. Uh, here I'm just gonna I'm gonna turn off my camera here uh, just for demos and turn off my microphone and click join now. And here we are in the space. I've got my avatar here that looks just like me. And this was created from just a selfie that goes through the um, you know through our uh, avatar creation process. You just take a selfie or upload a photo and we create that in just a matter of seconds. But here I've got this gorgeous gallery space and I can move around. Just by using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I can click left and right, click and drag left and right to look around. And I can click anywhere on the floor to teleport around the space really, really quickly. So really easy to move around uh, just with my key keyboard and mouse, kind of just like a video game. So you can see oh, we have tons of wall space in here for you to decorate um, and design and lay out uh, this gallery space. You can even look out the windows. We've got some uh, glaciers and rocks, um, islands outside, and just gives this uh, entire gallery a really relaxing uh, feel to it as well. So I'm gonna come back here into the center of the room. And now I wanna start bringing in my NFTs uh, and my art and laying it out in the space. So since we've already connected our MetaMask wallet, um, that's a one-time thing that we had to do. Now at the bottom, you'll see our content menu, basically our way of bringing content into uh, a room or space in Spatial. Um, so just going left to right really quick, we have sticky notes so you can really quickly write up some notes and put them on the wall, great for like collaboration or sharing ideas. Uh, we have, you can add a portal. So this is kind of uh, a great way to jump between different rooms. Um, if you have uh, a set of rooms that you've created, maybe with different themes, or maybe you wanna to jump to a room to an artist that you visited recently or that you really like. You can create a portal here and that'll allow people to quickly jump to that space, kind of creating an interconnected metaverse. Uh, then we have a, a search function. So if you wanted to quickly bring up images um, for say, pictures of dogs, I'll just do search for dogs. 
And now we get some images of dogs and even some 3D models oops, that we can bring into the space as well. So a really great way to um, bring in some additional content if you wanted to decorate it with maybe images you don't have. Uh, then we have the plus button. So this is saved content. So this is, these are any content that, that I've previously brought into to spatial in the past, files that I've uploaded or NFTs um, that I've brought into the space. So you can see I've got um, a bunch of NFTs. I have um, some 3D models, some videos, um, all kinds of content here that I've that I've uploaded previously. And then kind of the star of the show today is uh, the NFTs itself. So we have a dedicated button for NFTs. M stands for MetaMask. And if I click on that, this is actually going to surface my wallet uh, that's got my NFTs in it right here. So if I click on any of these, let's say I want to uh, bring in this peak of Iraqi, which is a photograph I took uh, in New Zealand, uh, really gorgeous um, part of the world, the South Island of, of New Zealand. So there it is. I have my NFT here. We even add a, a little uh, frame to it as well. And I can turn that on or off by clicking the hide or show frame button at the bottom. Uh, and then I can just click and drag on it, move it around anywhere in the space here, just clicking and dragging and then using my keyboard to move around. And then I wanted to throw it up on this wall over here. As soon as I approach the wall, it'll stick to that wall and then I can move it around, place it where I want and then use the panel on the right here to position it and scale it up and get it to the right exact right position that I want to. So I'm gonna make this really big. I'm gonna take up the entire wall here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Center it a bit. Good. I can even fine tune that positioning with the XYZ scale here by clicking and moving that around a bit. Scale it up a little bit bigger. Nice. Um, now, what differentiates, of course, this image from just a regular image, you know, this being an NFT, is that I can enable, I can show a little plaque um, for the NFT. So I'm going to click that. And what that's doing is actually bringing up the metadata from that piece right here into spatial. So I can see the title of it, who owns it, or who created it, uh, the description. Uh, and where it's uh, actually minted at. So I'm just gonna zoom in here by scrolling up on my mouse wheel and I can read that piece a little better. Uh, what's great about this as well is now that I've shown this plaque, it's visible, it's actually clickable too. So I can just go up to it as soon as I hover over it here on the web, you'll see it says open link and that'll open up the NFT right uh, in another tab. So I can view more information about it. In this case, it's on OpenSea. Um, if it was up for, for sale, um, I can buy it or bid on it. You know, really everything you can do, of course, in OpenSea, and now it becomes accessible. So your your spatial gallery really becomes a, a, a 3D showcase uh, uh, for your work. And not just a showcase, but really uh, an interactive space. Because anyone can come in here, you share the link with them, you can have 30 plus people in here. Um, and if you uh, tuned in at the very beginning, we played a little video showing one of the events we did actually with the whale uh, community earlier this year, where we had a ton of people uh, in their gallery space. They opened up their vault and laid out uh, their, their NFTs uh, in this space here and locked them down. Um, so it really became not just a space to view NFTs, but actually meet people, have conversations around them, uh, allow the artists to meet their fans and collectors uh, and have conversations with people. So it becomes just like a, you know, an IRL uh, gallery event or just a, you know, a, a real life event where you can talk and, and uh, um, meet other people. Now, if you're in a VR headset, of course, the avatars become even more expressive because you're using things like controllers in your headset that's tracking your hand movements and your head movements. So people look um, and move just like they do uh, in, real, in real life. So we've got you know the first of our, our NFTs up here. So that's looking good. And I'm just gonna make sure to lock it in place. That way, um, you know, no one comes in and starts moving it around. I can start bringing in uh, some of my other NFTs so I'll bring in this 
uh, this great photo from uh, another photo from New Zealand, actually. Uh, really loved that trip down there. I'm going to turn off the frame. I'm going to scale it up really big and put it up here on the wall. Turn on that plaque so it becomes clickable and lock it in place. I'm going to do one more. Over here, we have this field of light uh, photo. This was actually taken uh, out in the Australian outback. So another stunning part of the world. I'm gonna scale this up. This one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the photo frame on this one. And then turn on the black there as well, and then lock it in place. As you see, you're bringing NFTs really easy to do. You're not limited to, of course, NFTs if you wanted to decorate your space with um, really any image, um, any any GIF, uh, any video that you have um, that adds to the space, helps tell the story of the art, helps tell the story of you as an artist or creator. Um, you can do that as well. Um, even 3D models. Um, we can even bring in uh, 3D models here uh, as well. I think I have. Um, See, I've got this model of, uh, in this case, it's Iron Man. Um, so I can bring him in here, have him load in. So if I wanted to, I'm a big Marvel fan, I can bring an Iron Man and start moving him around the space. If I wanted to uh, put him on a, on a pedestal too, if I wanted to showcase him, we actually have a little pedestal button. I can put him on, on a little pedestal. Really turning my space into a into a museum. I don't know of what Iron Man in, in New Zealand, but I can really start to to decorate this space, and it's it's looking pretty cool. You can bring in any kind of content. If I wanted to, um, you know, if, like I said, if I had videos or other things that weren't minted as NFTs, but I still want to showcase them in the space, I can simply I'm going to click a file I have here on my desktop, and just drag and drop it right into the browser window. So I've got this video here. Uh, it's going to upload and take a few seconds to, to process. We just get it into a good optimized state. Upload that video. And just a second, it will come up here. Give it a second to come up. Um, in the meantime, I'll bring in my uh, one of my other NFTs. This is actually, oh, oh, there's the video. I wasn't the NFT. So we can bring up that video. Not sure if the video from the audio from the video is coming through on the stream, but I'm going to pause that really quick. Um, just think about videos, you can have them on a loop. So if you, and this goes for uh, video NFTs as well. Uh, you can click, if you go into the bottom right corner here, you see this loop icon. Clicking that's going to loop it. Um, so I'll just play continuously. And then right next to that, it's hard to see here, uh, but there is a volume icon. So I can click that and mute the video as well. That way I can still play it but of course, without hearing it. And we're gonna be adding in additional video controls um, in the pretty near future as well. So you can control the volume more specifically versus just on or off. So there we go. So, you know, like I said, we have a, a whole host of spaces to create your galleries in. Um, I guess the next thing to, to talk about is how you can actually share this with others and make it a, a collaborative space um, and, and a shared experience. Um, so right now it's it's really locked down to just me. So if I go up into the top right corner, click the share button, you can see here underneath uh, the name of my space, it says visible to only me and people that I invite. So right now it's, it's very much you know a private space. If I wanted to add some people here, I can type in their email address in here, send an invite, they would receive an, e uh, an email um, with a link to the space, and then they can enter the space. But of course, I want as many eyes uh, on my art as possible. So I want to open this up more widely. So I can click that drop down here and then go to anyone with a link. I'm going to click that. And now 
It's very similar to like a Google Doc. Now anyone that has this link can jump into the space and they don't need a spatial account either to do it. So if you post the link to your space on Twitter or, or through text message or whatever it might be, um, they can click that link and go into spatial without, without an account. They would be an anonymous avatar. They wouldn't have their face or, or anything like that, um, but they would just can put in a name or a handle um, and still participate in the space, talk to others, have a look around, click on the art, um, whatever it might be. Um, so it makes it really easy for anyone to jump into a spatial gallery, which is great. So we can just click copy that link and then I can put it on Twitter or wherever I want to, to do that. It's for other people to jump in. That's how you share your, um, your galleries with others. It's so really easy to get going. So, so I talked about the different types of uh, spaces that we offer that we've designed, but say you want something you know, really unique, really custom. Um, maybe you wanted, uh, in this case, I have these photos here. Maybe I wanted to actually put my photos, my gallery, have it be at the base um, of a mountain. Or I wanted to, if you've we've shared before, uh, incredible uh, photographer, Kath Simard, um, has a gallery in spatial, and that's actually in an ice cave. Um, actually, no, let's go take a look at it. I'm gonna add a portal to the space because I want people here to, to check it out as well. I'm going to just search for Kath. There we go, we have our ice cave there. And there we go. Now we have a portal to Kath Samar's ice cave gallery. Um, and I can put it right here in the middle of the room and I can scale it up really big. I want a big portal here in the center of my space. Okay over here um, and now I can just simply click on it and we're gonna head over to Kath's gallery and what's really cool about this is I mean not not only am I a huge fan of uh, of her photography um, we've actually got some music hopping in here again I'm not sure if that's coming through on the on the stream don't think it is, but we've got some music popping in here. Um, so you can bring in MP4 files that are playing music and really give your space, you know, a real, you know, the, the real vibe that you want. You can really turn it into a party atmosphere. So you can see here um, we have Kath's NFTs, um, her incredible photos all around the space. I think one, um, some of these are even um, videos. They've got some incredible movement going on uh, that she added there. Uh, and they're all, of course, clickable. So I can click on the info panel there and go to the super rare listing uh, for this piece and check if it's you know something I can make an offer on because it, it, it's just an incredible piece of work. Um, and then what you're seeing here, really kind of the most unique thing about it is the fact that we're not in that default gallery environment anymore, or we're not in any of the spaces that you saw um, as an option at the beginning uh, for to choose to have your space in. We're actually in a photogrammetry scan of an ice cave. Now this is really cool. We can go deeper here into the ice cave I actually get chills going in here sometimes. I want to put on a sweater, even if it's 80 degrees outside in the real world. So you can see this really gorgeous ice cave. You really feel like you're you're immer immersed in it. It kind of sets the tone completely differently, and it's a perfect. Um, it goes pairs perfectly with uh, the photos and the art uh, that's in here. So how did we go about doing this? So to do that, let's go back uh, to the gallery that I was creating before. I'm actually gonna click leave, we're gonna head back into the space that I was working on. We go into team, here we go, there it is. I jump in here. And now we're going to, to set this to be a unique space. Now to do that, there's a couple ways I like to do that. Of course, if you're a 3D artist um, today, you can bring in your 3D models um, you know, as the, the raw files themselves, we support FBX, uh, uh, GLB, GLTF, OBJ, DAE files. 
um, you can import those directly into Spatial. Um, or if you're you know, if you have those minted as NFTs, um, you can of course bring those in as as NFTs. Now, the only limitations that there are is that um, we currently limit 3D files to 30 megabytes, uh, and that's for performance reasons, since this can be running across a whole host of devices from mobile phones to VR headsets. Um, that's the main thing to keep in mind, as well as the texture size um, when when creating the model. A 2048 by 2048 max te texture size is what we generally, generally recommend. Um, other um, recommendations and best practices you can find on uh, our support site. So if you go to support.spatial.io and check out the article about how to create a gallery in spatial. Uh, we go through everything that I've been going through today, and then you can dive deeper into creating custom spaces and custom environments. So I think the last step here, we're gonna actually turn this uh, gallery environment into uh, a custom space, a custom environment. Um, so the way I like to go about doing that, um, again, if you're a 3D artist, you can create your own stuff and bring it directly into spatial. If you're not a 3D artist, I myself am not a 3D artist, um, there's a lot of great resources online for purchasing or downloading um, 3D models that people have put out there. Um, so one of the ones that I like to use is a site called Sketchfab. Um, so if you go to sketchfab.com here, there's a huge library um, of user-generated content, animated models from individual characters to, um, to entire spaces and buildings and really everything you can imagine. So my process typically I like to do is search for a certain type of space. Let's just call it you know, a gallery space and then filter on downloadable. And then I can see all the spaces here that are downloadable, either for free. They have just the download button. You can download them for free. Or uh, they're available to purchase, too. Um, so definitely recommend you know whatever you find. There's a lot of great content on here. Um, so let's just go through and see what's available. This gallery space looks interesting. Um, we're going to take a look at that. So what I do is to make sure this performs well and fits within our recommendations, I look at a couple of things. The first thing I look at is a triangle and vertice count. So with this, you generally want to remain a, for both about at or below 100,000 triangles and vertices. Um, if you get up too high, especially in the vertice count, um, you'll see a lot of performance problems when people experience uh, your space on, say, like a VR headset or a mobile device, which could be less powerful than, say, a desktop computer, potentially. Um, so we like to you know, recommend keeping those below 100,000 um, points. Uh, the next thing that I look at is the download size. Um, so since we have a limitation of 30 megabytes, I'm looking to see if, of course, that's under 30 megabytes. Uh, so in this case, it's 23, so that's perfect. So since this is kind of fitting the, the recommendations um, and our best practices here, um, I might actually try this model out. I actually haven't tried this specific one out, um, so this is kind of going to be a, a live uh, a live test. So we'll see we'll see how this goes. Uh, so I'm going to click Download 3D Model. And then you get a couple of options here. You can do an FBX or GLTF or USDZ. USDZ is uh, the uh, AR format. Um, there is an AR mode actually on Spatial's mobile app, um, which is really, really cool. I think that's um, subject of another video we'll do. Um, but today I'm going to do, I'm actually gonna use the GLTF format. Um, and just kind of a peek behind the curtain. Typically when you upload um, files to Spatial, we actually end up through our pipeline converting them to GLB anyway. Um, so we definitely support FBX and OBJ and the other file formats. But if possible, I uh, always recommend GLB or GLTF. You'll get less, um, uh, there'll be less questions, I guess, when the file gets uploaded uh, and, and viewable and spatial. Okay, perfect. So we have that gallery file downloaded. Uh, it actually downloaded as a zip, which is perfectly cool. I'm going to go into my downloads uh, folder here, uh, which you can't see on the live stream, but I've got it over here. And then I'm just actually going to drag and drop the zip folder itself right into Spatial. So you can you can upload the zip 
uh, directly into into spatial itself and that's going to bring in the textures and and the mesh um, all in here uh, and that actually downloaded as a four megabyte file um, which is which is great not very large at all so that's going to to process here uh, once the processing uh, toast goes away uh, for zip files we'll have to go into our content uh, folder here and pull it out. Uh, if it came in directly as the GLB, it'll pop right into the room right away. But I'm going to click that gallery dead zip. And again, this is a live test. So we'll see how this looks in reality since I haven't worked with the specific model itself. And there it is. It's actually looking pretty good. So here we've got this cool gallery house space. I can click on it and move it around and get in close and look at it I can also use this uh, our uh, object uh, tools here to rotate it I can move it around on the XYZ axis and then I can scale it up as well so now I actually want to use this environment oopsies I want to actually use this environment uh, as the shared space instead of the gallery space. I want to have this in this uh, home gallery environment. So to do that, uh, and you can do this uh, on uh, on VR headsets, the spatial app on VR headsets like the Oculus Quest uh, and on uh, our web app here. So I'm going to click that. And then at the bottom, you see we have these context um, relevant buttons. So this these buttons change now that I've selected a 3D model. One of those buttons it's got the mountains on it, is the set custom environment button. So we can set that model as our custom environment. So I'm going to click that, click set as environment. And now we get we go into our custom environment setting mode. Um, so we have our 3D model here. Uh, and then you'll see this grid icon and a little preview of an avatar here at the center. And what this is doing is basically helping, helping us get a sense of scale relative to the 3D model. On this little, um, this wall, this kind of semi-transparent wall, this will actually determine the spawn point in the room for, for visitors of your space. So uh, I can actually click on that wall itself and click and drag it around. You can see we have a little version of, the, of an avatar standing in front of the wall. So all users will spawn at this point in front of the wall. Um, and this is actually about where the preview of the room is set as well. So if you've seen the spatial home screen, there's live previews of the room. That's actually set by, uh, we have essentially like an invisible camera pointing, in this case, away from the wall, um, looking into the space, and that'll set your live preview of the space. But I can click and drag and move this around, um, just kind of rotate it like that. Um, if I want to get that in a certain spot, but of course I can take the uh, the 3D model itself of the room. And I'm going to scale it up. We don't have a one-to-one a -one scale button uh, as well. And here you can see I can move the space around and get this. This is a little big. I'm going to scale this down a little bit, kind of like that. It's a little better. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And now I'm just going to position this. So I want this facing slightly different direction like that. There we go. And then I'm just going to align the floor with the floor of the model. So about like that. And then I can click Next. And now what's great is I can get a preview of what it's like being in the room before I officially set it. Just so I make sure I get a, you know the scale is good, um, the positioning is good all of that. And then once I think that's all right, I'm going to click looks good. And now that's going to change the environment to that 3D model. Just give it a second here to set that. There we go. And now we're inside a 3D model that we got off of Sketchfab. We are now inside it. Uh, what's really cool is actually at our, re our recent release in Spatial 5.0, we added the ability to go upstairs we call it custom environment mesh teleport just a fancy way of saying that you can go upstairs now so i can click anywhere on a horizontal surface and walk around the space so you can actually now have multi-level multi-level environments which is really awesome
It looks like some of my pieces are outside the walls. That's just because they kept their position from where they were in uh, the gallery that we had set previously. So I'm just going to drag these indoors right here like that. There we go. So, oh, there's one more. Unlock that and drag that into the room. Perfect. And I'm going to head downstairs. And now I can click on these guys. And I'm just going to rescale them and put them up on the wall. Just like so. So now I've brought my NFTs into a space. And you can call this my home in the metaverse. Um, Chateau de Jake, whatever you want to call it. Um, and actually start using my NFTs from my collection as decorations in in my house, in my virtual house that I got here, which is really awesome. And like I said, the, the 3D model was actually got, you know, we downloaded it from, from a 3D model library, but these, um, the 3D model itself could of course in and of itself be uh, an NFT. Uh, so you can have this space be really, really unique. So if you are a 3D artist uh, who is minting uh, 3D spaces as, as NFTs, uh, definitely drop us a DM or reply, um, reply to us here on on Twitter or Twitch or wherever you're watching from. Uh, let us know. We'd love love to chat with you. Uh, love to see the spaces you're creating. Um, we're working with a ton of artists today. We've got some exciting drops happening uh, over the next few weeks and months. So really looking forward to telling you about that. But we'd love to work with with more of you because um, it's really the creators that drive drive the whole metaverse and drive it forward. Uh, I'm going to move this move this portal to Cat's Ice Cave over here to put it in the corner over there so it's out of the way. Cool. So we're starting to to design our our space here, and it's looking it's looking pretty cool. Uh, and like I said, this model was since we got off of Sketchfab uh, wasn't one that we ourselves have designed. Um, so we're getting you know the textures are here, of course, are, are a bit bright. Uh, in our case, so just ignore that for now. But any again, any 3D model that you bring in uh, can be set as the environment. So a really cool way to, to create custom spaces. Um, yeah, the last piece um, I'll mention before before we kind of sign off for today um, is, of course, we've made the space, we've brought in our NFTs, we've made it accessible to anyone with a link. The the last thing to to keep in mind is you know you want to invite people to the space maybe you want to invite anyone from from the public or your twitter followers or whoever they may be uh, to come into the space but you may not want them to to modify it or mess with it um delete things um stuff like that because right now it is um you know an open and editable space um so you want to lock lock down that space so in order to do that we actually have a feature called host tools uh, now that gives you exactly that ability to act as a host of a space of an event um, to to lock things down, um, so people can't make changes to it. Uh, so to enable host tools, I'm actually going to join on my phone here. Um, so you might see a clone of me there coming into the room. Uh, what I'm doing now is going to show you how to enable host tools. I'm actually going to do this from my phone. So I'm going to full screen my view, hello, uh, and show you how to do host tools here on your phone. Because host tools right now can be enabled from the spatial mobile app. So on iOS or Android devices, or um, as well on virtual reality headsets like the Oculus Quest 2, which is a great headset. Um, but spatial also works on really any VR headset that's supported by Steam VR. Um, so you're not limited to Oculus headsets um, either. But anyway, back to the, the task at hand is setting uh, host tools. So I'm here in Spatial, in the room, in the mobile app. I can move around, look at the art, uh, talk with, I guess, myself in this case, because I'm in there twice talking to myself. Um, but I want to enable host tools. So I'm going to come in here to the bottom, uh, bottom right corner onto Settings. I'm going to click Settings. And then you'll see we have a whole host of settings. I'm going to click on host settings. I'm going to try and do this backwards. There we go. Now you can see we have 
all different kinds of options for how you can basically be an admin uh, of the space, lock things down. So in this case, I don't want people to make any changes or add their own content. I don't want you know anyone coming in spamming the space. So I'm going to turn off, again, this is, I'm gonna turn off a bunch of features here. So host tools allows you to basically turn off all these options. So you can see we have allow add content, allow downloading of content, allow editing of host content, allow changing the environment, all those things. We want to turn those off. So disable the ability to add content, disable the ability to download content, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm actually gonna go through and check all of these off like that. So now they're all off. And now when you send the link um, for anyone to this space, um, they can come in, but they can't make any changes. So it's basically kind of like a read only um, mode for the environment. Um, so to do that, you'll, uh, you can get host tools. It's actually part of Spatial Pro. Uh, you can sign up for 20 bucks a month um, to get that and a ton of other features. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at the chat here. It looks like we've got some questions. Uh, ben said a few minutes ago, perfect timing. I've been planning to create a gallery on Spatial recently. I have been working on the art to put in there. Perfect, Ben, definitely can't wait to see uh, the art that you're making and the space that you're making. Definitely feel free to share that with us and tag us uh, on any posts. Uh, we'd love to check out your space. Uh, we have another comment here. How can I make 3D models have luminous materials and spatial? Um, so right at the moment, um, uh, we don't, so, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we do not support um, uh, essentially emissions uh, uh, emission properties on 3D models, um, but would love to learn more um, from you, uh, the creators, about that. If that's something that um, you use a lot that you need, um, we love to learn more about how you're creating those uh, and how we can best support those. So more to come on that, uh, hopefully, uh, in the near future. So, so that's that's it. That's how to create your your NFT gallery in Spatial. So you saw how to bring in NFTs. Um, you saw how to lay it out in a gallery environment, how to set the permissions and host tools in the space, um, how to even bring in portals to that space. So you can have basically a set of interconnected galleries with each other uh, and uh, how to set custom environments, how to download a 3D model um, or import a 3D model to Spatial and set that as the custom environment, uh, even multi-layered multi-level, excuse me, uh, environments in spatial. So you can have entire homes and buildings and all kinds of interesting spaces filled filled with your art. This is, this is what it starts to look like. So this, really, we did this in just a matter of minutes. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, um, feel free. Well, actually, it looks like oh, we got just a comment in, uh, in the Discord. Definitely join our Discord as well. Um, do you have experience with 3D scanning and creating a space like that? What is the best way to do it? Can you use the new scanner for the iPad for that? Um, great question. So someone in our Discord asking if you can lie, if you can do a LiDAR scan um, uh, or just any ki kind of real-time 3D scan and bring that into a space. So the great answer is yes, you definitely can. Um, so actually within the spatial mobile app, if you have um, some of the more recent iPhones, say the ones with the LiDAR scanner uh, on the back of it, like the iPhone 11 uh, and above. Uh, this is the iPhone 12. Uh, we actually have a built-in room scanning and object scanning mode uh, on, on the iPhone. We'll actually do a, a different uh, video and live stream about that uh, pretty soon, but you can use directly within the spatial mobile app, scan a room or scan an object and load it into the space and then set that scan as the environment, just like any other 3D model. Um, but you can also use other uh, other scanning apps uh, like Polycam, Scanaverse um, are two that I like to use that do a great job of creating scans and then just export those scans um, as GLBs or FBXs um, or you know the other variety of formats that we support and bring those, uh, bring those into spatial. Uh, again, just like any other 3D model. So we definitely work um, with those 3D scans. So if you do a 3D scan of a space and create a gallery, again, would love to check it out. Um, so feel free to share that with us, um, post on Twitter, uh, tag us in it, 
uh, we'd love to jump into your space uh, and see what it's all about. So thanks for the questions. This, these are great. Um, so I think that's that's it for, for today. Um, this, uh, this live stream is gonna be recorded. Uh, it'll be up on our YouTube uh, and our various channels. Uh, if you have you know, any, any additional questions or if you need help getting started, uh, with your own gallery. Like I said, join our Discord. We have a Slack as well. Uh, the links for both of those can be found in our bio on Twitter. Um, and the link is here on the live stream. So discord.gg slash spatial. And you can follow us on Twitter at, uh, at spatialxr. Um, so thanks very much, everybody, for joining. Um, hope to see you um, pretty soon in the metaverse. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.